Soundstripe. This podcast is for educational purposes only. We are qualified clinicians who will cover various topics on mental health and will sometimes provide community resources. We are not being paid by any organization for our content and any information we provide is general and pertains to our own personal experiences. We do not, I repeat, we do not provide psychotherapy, diagnoses, or treatment recommendations on air. Any concerns related to your individual mental health should be directed to your medical and mental health professionals. We are not responsible for others' decisions or the subsequent consequences. So the hot sauce for today, we're going to talk about this term submissive. Submissive means someone who is ready to conform to the authority or will of others, i.e. meekly obedient or passive. This term is used a lot when referring to women. (laughs) Stop. Oh, I'm, no, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I heard the term obedient and cracked up because I would never do no such thing. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So why? Go ahead. That's, what I, that's what I'm saying. So this term is used a lot by men who are like saying it's a whole thing now where men say they want a submissive woman. But then mm-hmm. people out there are like, well, submissive means this. Submissive means that. So you can be a submissive woman and still be this, that, and the other. You can still be independent and blah, blah, blah. And in my mind, like you just did, Keish, when I hear that term obedient, I'm like, so I'm supposed to do everything you say, no questions asked, like I just do it? Mm-hmm. No, hell no. And see, that, and see, that's my problem. You just read that definition. The word means what it means. I cannot stand when people try to flip it to mean something else. It doesn't mean anything else. It means exactly what you just said. And this is why a lot of women have a problem with it because we can try to turn it and twist it to make it this, oh, mutual submission. No, because most men aren't about to be obedient to a woman. So it will never be mutual. That's that's not, that's not going to happen. So by definition alone, that's why so many women have a problem with that term and with men who want a submissive woman because it's almost like you want a dog. Dogs are obedient, not women. Damn. Well, my thing too is like, In my relationship, there are certain things that I may submit to. Like, I'm not a submissive person in general. Like, I'm not just going to do what you say, no questions asked, and just be obedient. But there are certain times or certain things that happen where my husband may ask me to do something, and I don't ask questions. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll do it. Um, So, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's like, where do you draw the line? When a man says, I want a submissive woman... Like you talking all submissive or just submissive in certain ways, sexually, emotionally. Like, I don't know what that means. I will will speak from a single person standpoint. Y'all are married. So I'm not saying that it doesn't include y'all, but from a single person standpoint, if a man walked up to me and said, I want a submissive woman, I would. Oh, she must be over there because it ain't going to be me. (laughs) I don't, listen, I don't, if a man ever said that, I will bust out laughing just like I did the first time. Because I don't, first of all, I don't believe in that term. I don't even, it doesn't even exist to me. I don't care what the Webster's Dictionary say. It don't, it don't, I, I do not even acknowledge that term. So This is me, not a real word. I, yep, it's not a real, it's not a real world, word in my, in my world. So I don't even acknowledge it. Um, and I know how I am as a person. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not obedient to nobody. Like I'm, I'm not, it's just, I don't know. I'm obedient to me though. I'm I'm submissive to myself. I follow Mm -hmm. my orders because in my mind, a man is always talking about, well, let a man lead. He, he, a man can lead. How? Everywhere I done got to in my life, I done got there myself. The only place a man can lead me is either to the bedroom or to hell. So ain't no way I'm going to let no man <laughs> take me anywhere. Bedroom and or why? to hell. And half the time he's taking me to hell. No, thank you. <laughs> and, but why can't men accept that? Like like you said, everywhere you done been in your life, you got there yourself. So why why can't men accept that and be okay with it? Uh, I think so it's a, a lot of men. Yeah, a lot of men get intimidated by that. 
They're like, if I can't have a woman that I can't control, then I don't, I don't want her at all. And then you well, have some men that won't say that. Oh, I think that men try to, I think it's a challenge for them when they try to get women to transform into submissive role. There are plenty of women who are out there who are willing to do whatever they want them to do. They just choose not to go after those women. They want to pick at the women like me and be like, oh, well, let me see if I can turn her to be submissive. No, don't argue with me about submission. If I say you're right, Amber, if you, if you need to accept that and move on to the woman who's willing to accept that, but they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't. Yeah. M pe people in general love a challenge. Most people love a challenge. So I'm not going to go for the easy target that will automatically submit to me. No questions asked. I want to know that I changed this other person and made them submit to me or, or somehow conform them to that. But Amber, what you said when you were talking about your husband, like if he asked you to do something, sometimes you will just do it. But see, the key term is asked you when it comes to submiss submission, a lot of times that sounds like telling me, like, I told you to do this. If you ask me, that means you respect me if you're asking me to do it. Because asking means I have the option to say no. When you tell me to do something, that's more like, you better listen to me. I'm telling you to do it. And see, yeah, that's, that's a double hell no for me. That's, a, that's, that's not going to work. Now, I will say for me, I submit to Elijah in the areas where I know he's stronger than I am. Like, I don't like dealing with finances and certain things. I don't like dealing with the budget. Like, I just don't. I'm too carefree of a person for that. I know that he knows how to do that. He knows how to handle that well. I will defer to him in those situations. I, you won't get no pushback from me. Whatever decision you make is fine because you're stronger in those areas. But areas where I'm stronger, he will defer to me and have no problem doing that. So that for us works. But when I hear submission, it's like you defer to this man for any and everything. Like you don't, you're not your own person. You can't make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. When I hear submission, I hear, I don't mind it. I don't mind it because we submit to each other. And I'm going to say that and double down on it because that's what happens. So in my relationship, I do certain things. He does certain things. We have a mutual respect for each other where it's not like, you know, do this because I said so. Because... My husband will tell you, I tell him, I done been raised. I don't need to be re-raised. Mm -hmm. okay. And so if, if you meet me and you know that you met a woman that's capable and you met a woman that has her wits about her and that knows what she's doing, then you can trust me in certain areas. And so we both kind of um, do that with each other. Like, like Ashley was saying, um, finances, you know what I mean? What I might take on that. He might take on, um, you know, like where we're going to go or what we're going to do. Like I might, I might plan a trip. We just submit to each other. And I think that that's a real thing because everybody already know it came from the Bible and some man perverted the Bible to say, no, you got, you got to listen to me. I'm going to dominate you. But when you read it, it says, wives submit to your husbands, husbands love your wife. Like your wife loved the church, like, like, um, God loved the church. So if God loved the church, God didn't want to dominate over every single person without them being with them being docile and not having opinions because everybody has free will. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand the um, oppression in it. I feel like it's a good term if you can both mutually respect each other. And I, I would, I would have to uh, say, Suge, like using the term as a psycho has a psychological effect on me. Like I can't even use the term because it, it just itches my ass. <laughs> So I just don't, don't even, don't even say that term. Like I almost get physically ill when people, <laughs> I just can't do it. But Not physically I wanna, I wanna, ill though. <laughs> I want to clarify something. I want to clarify something because every time some woman says she doesn't want to submit, we are, and, and I'm talking about single women, we always get it thrown in our face that we'll be single forever. And I just want to make it be clear here that, Listen, I've learned over time that I don't even have to be submissive because I still get the same benefits. Men still want to ask me out. Men still want to procreate with me. And hell, men still even want to marry me. So it does. you don't have to be submissive in order to get those things, but it is often thrown out or my marital status is al always thrown in my face. If I'm not submissive to a man, I'm like, yeah, but I can get a man without doing that. Yeah, and Listen, that's even assuming that you even want to be married want and that you want to be in a you're relationship. Right. That happens right. to women all the time. Like, some women don't want kids. They don't want to be married. They want to be single, and that's totally fine. And it's so totally fine. So people throwing that at you, like, that's that's that whole, 
They do. Right. They like you think that, that's not an insult to every woman. Yeah, it's yeah, not, not an insult. insult. Men, but, but when know. men run with it, they're like, "You're going to be single forever. Good luck with raising your cats. Good luck raising your dogs by yourself." I'm well, like, good yeah. luck. Good luck with finding a submissive woman acting like that. Good luck. Right. They do. Good luck with raising your cats. You know what they think. You know, you know, it's a long stereotype that single women got a whole bunch of cats. They become the cat lady. <laughs> right. I don't no. even like cats. What you mean? <laughs> You but, like bats, though. But anyways, I got you know, go ahead, Ash. <laughs> hey, Amber, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. You know what type of week I done had <laughs> with some bats. Soundstripe. So what, what do y'all think about submission, the guys? Like, what's your perspective on that? Because we, we see a lot in social media now about men saying that they want submissive women women that do what they say do what they want when they want how they want and no talking back or anything like that like what are y'all's thoughts on that i like it so now i'm playing it's a joke i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> i don't like it I... <laughs> what no ice <laughs> now nah, so amber's not submissive at all so you know everything she's i say to her she combats i mean but that's cool though because she has her own personality I believe if you're too submissive, you don't have a personality. You know, you're kind of like a pushover. You know, and I don't want to push over for for a wife. So. Okay. Okay. That was not I, what I, I expected. Think, yeah. but okay. No. <laughs> I mean, I think it's I think it's pretty archaic, and that's just however you, however you define it, however you build your relationship. I don't expect my wife to submit to me, but then again. It's just the dynamic of our relationship. If you know me being the head of household, you know it. It, it may come naturally, as some people may define it. I think, I think we define the term submissive in a negative light. Like I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, I don't. Like I said, I don't. I don't want anybody that's gonna respond to me like a child. Not that the kids listen, but um. You know, like I said, you want somebody that has their own mind and be able to hold their own. Because like I said, if we out doing different things, I don't need her calling me every five minutes. Hey, can I buy this? Hey, can I do this? Hey, can I go to... I don't have time for that. But as a man or head of the household, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you've instilled that trust and confidence, your spouse, you know, is, you know, kind of by default will allow you to, to take that lead role and it's not an issue. You know, it doesn't uh, it doesn't make her feel like any less of a woman. Uh, we have a situation that we need to come to solution with. We hear all sides. We will hear both sides of the argument and be like, okay. So then I'll be like, well, what you want me to do? And then it comes right back on me. It's well, it's whatever you want to do. And that comes from, you know, you know, an established precedence that you know I haven't steered us wrong, or I'm not going to do anything out of spite. And I have not only mine but hers and the rest of the household's best interests in mind so it kind of it kind of comes naturally it's not that you know you know she's you know a weak in me or anything like that because if you have to stomp your foot and constantly say i'm the man and this and that you don't have any kind of control or authority whatsoever to begin with damn i think <laughs> no uh from elijah's perspective i i like that because there has to be trust between both of you. Like if y'all talking about something, um, it's not saying that, like you said, the head is always going to make the right decisions. Um, and if your spouse doesn't agree, I'm sure she will let you know, but yeah, it, there has to be a trust. Or if you, if you think about it from a team perspective, like this might not be the best decision. It might not be the most logical decision, but we're going to go and attack this as a team. Or I might not 100% agree, like, why are we going this route? And, but if we're on the same page, like, all right, we're going to try it. If it fails, we're going to go in as a team. Like, we about to fail together. But, yeah, and it, if I'm being honest, there's a lot of things that me and her do not agree with 100%. I'm like, I don't know if we should do that. Because I'm like, for the most part, I, I like to look at things from a logical perspective. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm like... There is no emotion. So I like to look at the facts. It could be it could be anything. So when you're trying to say I like to look at stuff logical, 
it sounds like you're saying I don't look at stuff logical. I don't. You, you take things from a, an emotional perspective sometimes. Well, that's oh, that's playing to strengths and weaknesses. Like, it's certain decisions that I'm going to be hands off on. It ain't got nothing to do with me. So, mm -hmm. like, back to what we talked about earlier. Like, if it's if it's something that involves emotion, that's all in assets court. I ain't got nothing to do with it. But if you go into it as a team and be like, all right, we're going to do it together, then, you know, I think that's that submissive, submissiveness when it talks about one to another, you know, not just – husband and wife but uh coming to a compromise I, it's more of a compromise so submissiveness i really like to hear your perspective on what you think about that term and just in general how this has become a popular at least from what i know a popular topic um, I don't think Smith has been popular. I think it's been around for a long, long time. I think, I think we're in a, a different, I think everyone, everyone's in an elevation growth moment right now. But, uh, I think submissiveness has to be on both parts, a man and a woman. Um, I think it begins the man. I think, you know, you have to love the person the way they want to be loved. Like love languages in a sense. Like you have to love the person the way she wants to be loved and you have to give a hundred percent of who you are, but that only happens when you're like free, like, you know, when you're not afraid of what the culture says or where you're not this way, not locked down. And then once you do that, then she'll give a hundred percent or some women give a hundred percent in general, just that, and other men don't give it and they fall back. And in her next relationship, she only gives 50 and the other man's giving a hundred. It's like, uh Oh, but I think it starts with the man first in general. So. Hmm. I've never heard of it where I someone has said that it starts with the man first. Um, personally, for me, I don't believe in the term. I think that you're right. It has been around for a long time. Um, but I'll be on TikTok so much where <laughs> like now that's like the new buzzword that's yeah. somehow resurfaced. But what about it you don't believe in? Like what, what the term in general? What about the term submissives? You don't believe it. It's just something about that term that itches my ass. <laughs> I, just, mm. I just cannot deal at all like if a man is even bringing that term up i don't there's nothing we need to even talk about and i don't i don't even think he should be su submitting to me either like i don't think of humans in that way i just i just don't see why the word is even even used i mean i know why because it's from a biblical sense but i don't follow the bible so maybe that's i'm like i'm good like i don't i i just don't apply that at all to my life I treat you as a human and as respect and you treat me with respect as a human. And that's just it. I don't, I just yeah. don't get into that. I think, yeah, that's probably what I think the, the kind of mishap happens. Like people take things out of context. Like they take it from the Bible and they try to put it in real world, but don't practice the other practices. So it kind of gets convoluted and like different things. But like, but in a sense, I think, but to be in love is to be obedient in general, because I have to love you with all my heart and soul. So for you not to like give it back, it's like, you know, or like, let's change the word up. What do you like? What would you What would you be appreciative to if it, we did change the word up? It wasn't submissive, or loyalty, or like, oh, uh, I'm a I'm a be I'm a be I'm a be, I'm a ride a be a ride or die. Does that sound better? Or? No, I ain't riding and dying for nobody. <laughs> I'm not riding. I don't know who y'all thought I was. But how many times you been in love? I, I will do no such thing. Every time, every time a chick ride or die, she dying. Period. Damn. Where you from, bro? I, I ain't trying to do nothing. Ooh, that was a spicy hot topic. Shout out to the TCC fam for their comments on Facebook. M. Nicholson says, People don't know the difference between submission and subservient. When people say submit, they mean subservient because our understanding of submission is based on slavery and the way that enslaved persons had to submit to the slavers. True submission does not mean that you lose your free will, thoughts, and autonomy. It means you agree to allow someone else to lead in certain areas, but you can always change your mind. Ooh, go on ahead, Mr. Nicholson. Then we also have Miss Mika Brooks. A relationship should be a partnership, especially in a marriage. You are supposed to work together for the betterment of one marriage. You are a team. 
I truly believe that when a man knows how to lead with respect, truly loving and honoring his wife, then she's not going to have a hard time allowing her king to lead her. She trusts him and can learn and depend upon him because he's, he has shown her that he can take care of her in all aspects. A true king and queen know their place and they both have a say so. They both rule their kingdom. Yes, Spika, we hear you. Christina here. Submission is not about dominating your partner and control. For me, in terms of marriage, submission is about trusting your husband or partner to lead and protect you in the family. You are submitting your will under his and allowing him to operate in his role as head of household, trusting him to act and make decisions that are in the best interest of your family. However, a marriage is a partnership, so no one should have complete control. We both consider one another in our decisions, work together, and respect one another's thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Thanks, TCC fam. All right, y'all. So today's main dish, we are talking about all things relationships. Spin off from our hot sauce topic. It flows very well into relationships and different areas of relationships. What we deal with, what we don't want to deal with. What do relationships look like? What do they look like when you're dating? What does it look like when you're single? How were you raised to look at relationships? All different things. Ultimately, a lot of men traditionally have been raised that their only job is to protect and to provide. So if a man is protecting and providing, then you should submit. But that misses a whole bunch of other things that we need in relationships like intimacy, mm -hmm. affection, emotional intelligence. It misses so much. So if all, you, if, if all it takes for me to submit is for you to protect and provide, yeah, my husband pay the bills. And I know if, if worse came to worse and he had to protect us, he going to go all out in a blaze to do so. But if mm -hmm. he's not treating me well emotionally, I'm still supposed to submit. But he's doing the two main things that people say men are supposed to do, that men are raised to believe that is their only job to protect and to provide. What type of emo emotional support do people need in relationships in order to feel secure in that way for a woman to say, like, yeah, I'll be submissive for a man to say, like, yeah, I'll protect <laughs> and provide. Like what type of support needs to be provided? I'm not in a relationship, so I'll let y'all go first. <laughs> yeah, but you got been in one before, and so you know what you're not looking for, right? You know what? Yeah, that's uh -huh. true. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Emotional support to me. Okay, I have children. We have um, finances to maintain. We have a house to maintain. We both have careers to maintain. So, in 2022, in relationships, if we're both working, I want I want the load shared. I want, um, you know what I mean? If, if I'm coming home and I'm cooking, I want you to take a day. I want to, I want to have a don't do that. Don't do day. And I want you to be like, you know what, babe, don't even worry about it. I got it today because it looks like you're tired. So if I'm supporting you when you come home and you're tired and you have all these things that you want to talk about that happen at work, I want the same respect. I want mutual respect. I want to, I want to process our day at the end of it. And I want to, you know what I mean? I want to uplift each other. I want to keep each other going. That's my ideal, my idea of emotional support. Um, In financial. Okay. See, so see my, when you say emotional support, I don't consider anything else but the emotional things in the relationship. I don't consider the finances, the kids. When we are talking about me and my partner and that emotional support, I need to feel safe enough to be vulnerable with you and tell you my deepest and innermost thoughts and feelings. And if I don't feel safe enough to do that, then I am not being emotionally supported. And all that other stuff is other realms when we talk about relationships. If we are strictly talking about the emotional support, it is me feeling safe and vulnerable with you from an emotional space. Yeah, and when you when you put it that it's that's that is hard for a woman and a black woman on top of that. It's hard to do that. So when you do find a relationship where you can be vulnerable and you can feel safe in doing that, um, it, ta it takes a lot to get to that point. And then the first time that that person does anything to shake that, that safe and secure feeling that you have, like it's done. Like for me, it's done. Like I, it takes so much for me to get back to that space. And if that person is not willing to do the work to get us back there, then it's, it's done. 
Yeah, once once this shows up a lot in couples counseling when they when couples come in and trust has been broken in any way, and I'm not just talking about infidelity. I mean in any way. Like you have relationships where I tell you something as my husband and you go tell your mother. No. Like this is a situation between you and I. There are some things that are just for you and I. I understand talking to people to get their perspective or when you need just an outside voice to kind of bring you back and ground you a little bit. But if I tell you this is confidential and this is a space that I'm vulnerable in and then you go and tell your mom or talk to your best friend or something like that, that's a broken trust. And now I will never tell you anything else. So when couples come in with that, when trust is broken, it's like a glass. You can piece it back together, but it'll never be the way it was. Hmm. See, emotional support for me is everything because if these bills ain't paid, I'm going to be emotional. I'm going to be emotional. Yes, yeah. all those outside factors affect your emotions. Yeah, they, yeah, that's emotional support for me. And so another thing too is when I have... I can't give you every single thing in me because whenever you drop it, then I'm going to be broken. So when, when I'm saying that emotional support for me is I can't rely on you to validate my every emotion because you know what? Some people are as supportive as a training bra on me and that's not support. So I don't give up every single thing. I just like it support me in every other aspect. And um, if you give me a little bit extra in that, then I'm very content with that because I'll reciprocate. But you, it's, it's, it's everything for me. Well, what, I had what to I, learn that. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Amber. No, I had to learn that. I had to learn that I cannot count on you to uphold everything for me. I can't count on you to validate every one of my emotions because, like you said, if I do and you drop that ball, then, then what? Then I'm going to just crumble. So there are things, and I know people might hear this and be like, that ain't what a marriage supposed to be. There are things I don't share with my husband about myself because I know if I don't get the kind of support I need for that thing, it's going to hurt. So I safeguard myself in that way. Like, nah, there's certain things that I keep that are just for me. I've done that for years. Not, well, I would say like the first half of our relationship and then like the, the beginning of our marriage and like you're saying, it's it's a protective thing, right? Like you don't give that person all of you. And then when you do, if they don't respond the way that you expect or the way that you need, then you close it back up. And when we're talking about like mental health and how that affects you, let's say that you're being super vulnerable with this person about your mental health. Like, you know what, I, I've been feeling really depressed about this thing. It takes a lot for somebody to tell you that. And... In our community, when you don't understand mental health, you don't understand what depression is or what anxiety is, you get that, like, you getting on my nerves. Like, calm down. You being extra. You being annoying. And when you get that response, it's like, oh, okay. So I need to just go back to doing what I was doing for the rest, for the rest of my life and just, like, not tell anybody anything. When actually relationships yeah. should be the place where you're able to share those things. That bothers me because nine times out of ten, if you're nagging, it's because you've had to say it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And if you were listened to the first 800 times, then it wouldn't be a nag. It would be more so of a reminder or you'd be able to talk about it because you've addressed it before. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what you just described, it's a difference between someone who is not able to validate your feelings. Like they just don't have the capacity to do so. They don't have the emotional skills to do so. It's a difference between that and totally invalidating your feelings. If mm -hmm. you don't have the capacity to do it, that's one thing. But if you say something like, oh, you're just being extra, you're dramatic, that, that now you invalidate my feelings. Like, I feel this way and I'm sharing that with you and you're making me feel like there's something wrong with that. And that's a problem. <laughs> I, I, I mean, for, to be honest, I agree with all y'all. Um, I would say communication is very important for me. I, I want to be I've always had dudes who felt like the finances if they did that that would that would replace the emotional part and I learned over time that no you need to be able to communicate with me about how you feel and then how I feel so that way we can work this out together um, I know the last person I was with he was a very good communicator very good listener matter of fact 
Like we can communicate, but I also need you to listen as well. Mm -hmm. So about my concerns and that's, and that's starting to be very important to me. Um, and then showing up, that's a big thing for me. I show up for my friends, no matter where you are, mm -hmm. where you at. Like if you say, <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to, I want you to come see me. Like, yeah, it was a delay, Shug, but I'm coming. I'm coming to see you, dog. Like, cause I really care about my friends and I, and I feel the same way in relationships. You got to show up for me. And if I got an event going on, I expect for you to be there. And like, if you gas me up about my, about my career and support me all the way through, like that gets me every time, every time you got me. So, um, I, I think support is a really big thing for me and communicating and listening. It's really big for me. Well, also, That's, in, um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You got it. No, I was going to say, just out of what you were saying, um, it, it makes me think about the, like, letting people know what's important to you as well when you get into a relationship. Like, what is important to you? Your career is important to you? Then that person knows mm -hmm. that they need to be supporting you in your career. If your family is important to you, that person knows that they need to be involved and supportive in that aspect as well. So that goes into communication as well. Like, when you first get into a relationship, mm -hmm. in order to avoid or at least reduce the risk that you're going to end up in a, in a really bad place, you communicate with each other and let each other know, like, what's what's your top three things that are important for you in your life? Mm -hmm. And how yep. can I make sure I'm supporting that and make sure you're supporting me as well? Because when it starts to go yep. one way and one person is supporting all the important things for that person, but this person ain't reciprocating, that's when it goes mm -hmm. bad. Right. right. But top it also three, goes into... Three. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Shit. No, you said, what's your top three? communication traveling and career if you can if you we can go out and hang out you can communicate with me and you can show up at my ex-boyfriend still showing up at my event and was there early passing out pins and stuff helping me out that's even though that sounds stupid the little stuff is what counts he was just mm -hmm. passing out pins he's like i knew you needed help he's like so i wanted to get here early before everybody came so i can help you that's what i'm talking about you better show up for me and I'll do the same. I, I'll put 100% into that. You show up for me, I show up for you. Period. That's how it goes for me. Yeah. But now we get into love languages, though. Because everybody don't show up the same way. And everybody don't want you to show up the same way. So, me and my husband did this love language test. One of my love languages is gifts. And um, words of validation. Like, words of affirmation. And his is words of affirmation and acts of service. And so, what I was doing was, I was buying him all these gifts. And I was doing all this stuff that I thought, man, I would want this. This is how I would want somebody to show up for me. And he was like, I don't want that, though. So why is that your thing? Like, you keep doing for me what you want me to do for you or what, what you think that I want. And so it's not it's loving somebody how they want to be loved and not how you want to be loved if you were them. And so, like, we got to kind of look into that, too, because you can be saying all this stuff. And, you know, I do this and I do that. And they could be like, but that ain't what I want. Just like you, right. just like you could be like, I want validation, and they could be like, okay, they're missing your love language too. All right, so Auntie Shug brought up the five love languages. So these are so Gary Chapman, he's a couples counselor, wrote a book in 1992 called The Five Love Languages, and it was basically a book about how we give and receive love. So, like she mentioned with her and Abraham, they found out they had different love languages. So the five love languages are acts of service, gift giving, physical touch, words of affirmation, and quality time. So usually what happens is you take a quiz and you find out where you fall. And anybody can take this quiz. It's online. You can just type in the five love languages. It'll take you right to the website if you are interested in taking this quiz to find out your own love language. Um, but for me... I did it. I've done it several times because your love languages can change over time as well. Um, but some people do not subscribe to the five love languages at all. At all. They, they have gotten a little bit of pushback because some people feel like I don't fall into any one of them. I really don't care if anybody does any of these things. That's not what that's not what makes me feel loved. So that's the background to that, to the five love languages. Do you have do you have a problem with showing your emotions? So, I, mean, I do have a problem with communicating <laughs> with Amber a lot. Um, we don't see eye to eye to everything. Um, I think she always she tells me about my childhood and the way I was raised. It's probably why I have um, trouble with communicating with her on a daily. There's something that I have to work on. 
Um, Abe, can you help me out, brother? Yeah. All right. So, uh, from my perspective, it can be difficult, like at, at least for me, to share like my my feelings, my emotions, and all of that. Uh, even at thirty seven. Sometimes I don't want to say it's easier to, to shut down and then to try to explain that, but I feel what you're saying, Marcus, on that. Uh, I'm probably not the best with sharing those things, even with my spouse, uh, as I probably should. I think I got better as the years have progressed, but I'm not. I got work to do as well, so we all got work to do. As far as communication as a whole, I think we do okay, except on the emotional front and that's more so because I really only have one, and it's usually when I'm angry. As far as the sentimental and all those other type of emotions, I really don't display those because, you know, I'm a, I'm a goal-oriented person, and I just feel that it just gets in the way. So I don't, I don't give – I'm not going to say they're non-existent, but they're such a small factor in my day-to-day -day being that I don't give much credence. And actually not, like you saying, like your day-to-day -day functioning, right? As as a military, all, all three of you are military. Um, so do you think that impacts your ability? Like has that had an influence on it? Or do you think that's just how you are, like how you've been? You know, so this this is me before the military, during, and it's probably going to be me after. Mm -hmm. I no, think uh, that, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, go ahead. I was just thinking like like about communicating in general like uh it's so it's, it is a lot of work like when you're married like uh I think obviously at least in my relationship I think Rashawn is better at it than me just even checking in throughout the day like hey you know I've been at work for like one or two hours she'll check in maybe it's a text or a phone call so I think at least from my perspective I gotta I have to be intentional on like oh damn it's been like Two and a half hours. Let me hit her up. It's chill. been like eight hours. Chill, chill. <laughs> Ain't been eight. Ain't been eight. Been like two and a half oh, hours. I try to check in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do get like I do get wrapped up in work sometimes. Just the many different things we get hit with. Um, I do work in kind of like a customer service environment. So if between the phone calls, the emails, the instant messaging, like it can be overwhelming. Like. Anybody else can hit me up throughout the day and they send me a text. I'm probably not going to respond. Like if I'm at work, unless I'm on my lunch break or something like that, or I've left the office, like I'm away from my uh, actual computer and stuff. So, but how how is that? Like how is communicating with your spouse not a priority? That's what I just said. I had to work at it. I'm like I'm being honest. I can lie. Let me lie and on this platform and say, <laughs> man, I check in every thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm real good at it too. Well, so that for, would be excessive. So, yeah. so for me, so. for me, for me, I was always better at communicating at work, uh, because with Amber, like it, it was a struggle for me at the beginning. Like I'd be out, and she was like, "Are you like what time? You know what time it is? Do you know when you're coming home?" I'm sitting here like, "Wait, I'm having fun with my boys," and I I, I failed to communicate that I would stay out a little longer. But um, yeah, communication is definitely something that I need to work on. Well, we were talking yeah, earlier. Yeah. We were talking earlier mm -hmm. in the episode about um, priorities too, mm -hmm. and like how communicating that at the beginning of a relationship could be helpful. So, like, is communication part of your top priorities? Like, what are, what are your top three priorities for a relationship? I guess that's what I'm asking for each of y'all. Like the top three awesome. most important things for you. Um. I don't think communicating is, it no. don't have to be no. in the top three for me. No. Okay. Um, I know we're going to talk about another part l later about languages and stuff, but like communication doesn't necessarily have to be in the top three most important things that, you know, I require from her or it doesn't make the top three. So what are your top three? I'll give you one, sex. Okay. <laughs> That's probably going to be in the top three. Yeah, yeah sure. and like, sex? yeah. <laughs> and what else? Is that it? Just sex? No, no. I, w I would say, I would say honesty mm -hmm. and dependability. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Besides sex. 
Okay, now I got a question. I've been quiet this whole time. I actually have a question because I'm I'm a little lost. So Abe said communic Abe, you said communication is not in your top three. But you all are in the military where lack of communication can be detrimental to your job. Yeah. So how do you not see it as detrimental to your relationship if, if that's mm. not a priority? That is well, but are we question. talking we talk about on the relational emotional level versus just talking? Because like they like Gabe said, you know, about checking in. Like I text you throughout the day, but it's usually about a task or hey, don't forget to do this or has this been done? Mm -hmm. So that's still not communicating on the level that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so basically your communication is still on a professional what work a level. Oriented. A goal oriented level. That's a, that's not professional, that's an Elijah level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Elijah got his own level of, of uh, mm -hmm. communication. <laughs> so, well, yeah, so mm -hmm. like, so your top three are what? Sex, honesty, and? Dependability. Dependability. Agree with him? Yeah, I, okay. I agree with that because you know, so the, mm -hmm. and, and my top three would be honesty, communication, and sex. So what what's the problem? Like if if we have the same top three priorities, like you don't you say communication? Well, well communication, well, yeah, communication is yeah, not and, that, and it's, right. yeah, that's something that we you know we've always kind of struggled with. Right, yeah. So as far as the five love languages go, um, I believe that his are acts of ser basically acts of service is number one, but. I'm gonna let him tell you how he feels about the love languages because it's it's tricky with him. <laughs> like I, I do believe in the love languages and I and I think they are accurate. You have to love people how they need to be loved instead of how you display love. But he got a whole different viewpoint on the love languages. So I'm gonna let him tell y'all he is. So I I, I believe them because I know Ashley's is but uh Hers is words of affirmation, but me personally, I don't subscribe to them because I don't consider my love take empty if things aren't done. So that's not a measure of how much she loves me or anything. Those are two separate. Those are two separate things for me. I view acts of service, you know, basically if I ask or may require something to be done. It's just because it needs to be done. That's you know that's part of life. This is this has to this has to be met. So it um, so it doesn't it doesn't derail me in any way. However, like I said, hers is words of affirmation, and I know that that she needs that she needs that feedback. And you know I may do it occasionally. That's very rare, but it's not a it's it for me it's a cumbersome task. You know, like mm -hmm. to, to have to constantly to build someone up. It's not that I don't think or, you know, of her in a certain light or, you know, she doesn't cross my mind throughout the day. You know, I just I ain't got time for all that to sit on the phone and be, you know, making kissy faces and emojis and all that other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't but mean that's I what we want, Elijah. That's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't when, want when that. In that, I'm, you know, doing all that, I'm missing something else that has to be done. Like this, you yeah. know, what's the, I mean, I guess it does bear fruit at the end of the day, but you know, that whole emotional disconnect I have doesn't allow that to happen. So, he, so I got a question then. Oh, so you, so go. you know, so you know that that is something that I need. I won't say require, but need it is it, something that I need. So is cumbersome to you. So how would you feel if I, and this is so random, but I got a point here. How would you feel if I randomly started sending you nudes like every day? It, it, I'd be like, oh, okay, it's nice. I like this, but at the same time, if, you know, I'm a task oriented, so, you know, that's a distraction for what I have to get done. Like say, for instance, I, I'm in school right now. You send it throughout the day. It's already hard enough to, to balance the the workload of school with what I have versus everything that that household wise I'm thinking about in the back of my mind that has to be done. That's the same reason why on my 10 minute break today actually I texted you I was like, hey, I need to get this uh, Elijah school account set up. Like that is a competing priority for me. So those that's just how I process everything. Like I am going to take care of the essentials first. Okay. 
So the first thing you said was you would think, oh, okay, that's nice, that's that's cool, I like this, but you it would it may deviate you from your task or take you away from it for a second. But I know you, you gonna get right back on task. But it would be nice. So can it be thought of in that frame, even if it's something that doesn't come natural to you? Just the idea that it would be nice to the other person. Okay, so then that means I got to take a break. I got to go crack open Shakespeare to find hey, a line. Wow. To find wow. something. To wow. find something that's like, wow. you know, or, or Google a poem. First off, no, 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 Shakespeare. To our if you send me some Shakespeare or a poem that's already done, those are not your words. Those are somebody else's words. You you read you read you read my writing. So you want me to come my own words? You're gonna get a two word. You're gonna get a two word poem, and that be the end of it. But I've read. But you have the capacity, Elijah. When you were in boot, in basic training, we wrote letters because we couldn't talk that much. You, I know. Hey, if this ain't your couples counseling session, I'm gonna say, can we can we go to the next one? Yeah. <laughs> Because they get into it like, uh-uh, no, Ashley is going to make sure Elijah understands what she's saying. It don't matter. Until tomorrow. <laughs> okay, Elijah is I'll, a green I'll glow. I'll get a rotation or something so oh, I can write. Jesus. Somebody else go. Elijah <laughs> is a green gold. Like, that's probably the way he's made up. He's a green gold. Like, what's the thing called? Not true colors. What is it called? It's the true colors. Uh, it's, a, it's another name for it, too, but he's just green detail oriented i think that's just the way he's made like and it probably benefits him at work too because he mm -hmm. probably he's task oriented gets a lot of stuff done mm -hmm. um so you you are you are the same way um i think he has changed me to be more so like okay well i know that all of this stuff is not coming throughout the day so i don't expect it and honestly i'm kind of bossy too so i have stuff to do and so for me it's not that big of a deal to not get kissy faces, emojis, and stuff like that all day. Because I have stuff to do. And then, like Elijah, I'm constantly thinking of, dang, what I got to do when I get, got to get home? What I gotta, what am I going to cook? What do I have to do? I have to write reports. I have to do this. What, are, what about the kids? I have to do this for school. And so, it, I think it's okay to have a difference of opinion and a difference of love language. And I think that we don't accept that about each other enough. Opposites attract, literally. Like me and Rashonda are polar opposites. Polar like, opposites. We we not the same. But yeah, we're opposites too. I mean, my my top two love languages are uh, words of affirmation and quality time, mm -hmm. and then yours are physical touch and gifts and shit. Gifts and shit. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> um, <laughs> there are times where, like, when it comes to like holidays and how we celebrate birthdays or Christmas or something like that. You know, he likes to buy me expensive sneakers, like $300 sneakers. And like, that's nice and all, but you could have just took me somewhere nice, wrote me a nice little letter, got me some flowers and I would have been just fine with that. Um, but on the other end, if I take him somewhere, write him a note, and give him some flowers or something. He's going to be like, all right, where are my sneakers at? Or where's my expensive watch or whatever? So it has caused some problems with us not understanding how we like to be loved or what makes us feel loved. Um, the other thing, too, is like security in your relationship, I guess, or security with yourself. Oh. Say for Elijah, that's a big thing that he doesn't need those things to feel loved. Like he, he trusts Ashley enough and trust their relationship enough to know that she loves him regardless of what action she's taken or not taken um, but for other people like me it's like I actually need you to show me that you love me because in the past I've had people tell me a lot that they love me or that they like me or want to be with me or whatever and haven't followed through on those actions so when you use words and tell me but there there's no action there's no time spent or like none of that to, to pair with it then I don't believe you and then I'm like you don't really love me you fake it that's my favorite word in it you fake yeah. it <laughs> I, I, I agree with that love we always we get taught that love is an action word so it's hard for me to understand how you don't need something to show you that somebody loves you because anybody can say they love you and that that really don't hold weight if, if you don't feel it or see it so for somebody who's more like actions speak louder than words 
you saying you love somebody doesn't for some people it just doesn't hold that much weight without the action mm-hmm. but I think sometimes the action is providing um yeah. you know taking care of like that. That. absolutely yeah I like that you hit that one on the head I like that one yeah. go ahead keep going back keep going <laughs> I got you Marcus the yeah, action no, is right. yeah. sometimes <laughs> providing um making sure that the kids are taken care of making sure that you don't have to want for anything um and for some people that's a show of love mm-hmm. and it's not a show of affection yeah but it's so, a show of love yeah I, and i and i See, can that's where, we, that's I can, where yeah. I disagree this is where i, I actually agree more with elijah mm-hmm. when he said he doesn't need those things to feel love the bills being paid that's a that's a necessity that has nothing to do with love for me. You want the lights on too, so that ain't just about me. background. He might not need them lights. Like. Well, he might not need them, but, but he want to eat. Had, he, he want I just eat. had a quick comment. <laughs> well, what, from what Shug was saying, real quick. Sorry, I forgot. I mean, so like with me, I was saying that I provide so much. Sometimes I can forget. You know, I know her words of affirmation. I can forget. You know, I forget to tell her I love her, but I, I provide so much, so I automatically assume that she knows, you know? But I don't. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm not perfect. But, like, like Ashley was saying, mm-hmm. for some people, mm-hmm. a lot of people, we need that action. Yeah. Because we've had experiences I mean that, in the past okay. with no action. Right. right. I'm just, the reason providing mm-hmm. doesn't really hit for me is because I know plenty of parents who provided for their kids mm-hmm. but they didn't truly show love for their kids oh yeah so their children never felt love but mm-hmm. they were taken care of just because you can financially take care of somebody does not mean you love them mm-hmm. rich people do it all the time they mm-hmm. can take care of a whole lot of people that don't mean they love them sounds right so if his love language is physical touch and he wants his feet rubbed how do you feel about that? That's just the specific. Uh, I think that's a great question. I think that's a great question. There was somebody I was with that was physical touch and he mm. wanted his back rubbed every night. Um, and for me, that wasn't my love language. Now I will say this, I will be very honest. I was not in tune with love languages yet. I didn't understand mm. that that was how he wanted to be loved. Versus me, I only wanted quality time. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, why do I need to touch you? And we sitting in the same room. It wasn't making sense to me. But after I started to learn more about love languages, understand love languages, I understood then that it was important to him that he wanted to be touched because physical touch was his, was his love language. So I do believe in love languages. I believe in, okay, this is what I have to do because this is how you want to be loved and vice versa for me. I'm quality time uh, and, you know, acts of service. So, but physical touch doesn't, that doesn't do nothing for me unless we get down with the get down. So, but (laughs) I do think that it is important to communicate those love languages. And I think that that, and I think that it's important to communicate it though. So if there's automatic expectation and I don't know what you like to be loved and I'm like, well, I don't want to do that, but you're not communicating to me like, Hey, this is, this is how I feel loved. Is there any way we can compromise? And you know, you do my love language. I'll do yours. Like, yes, that's different when we communicate, but if it's an automatic expectation and you're not communicating that to me, I'm not going to know. So Hmm. I do agree with, uh, love languages. Auntie Keish, you just told me you will. That's obe- That's that's submissiveness, according to definition. That's submissiveness. I don't. Will ready I to don't, conform to I don't authority. Believe that. I'm, I gonna do. t- I'm gonna explain to you. Listen, listen. While while you practicing someone else's love language, you're actually conforming to their will, their willingness to be loved. So for you to do that, it's like you're like you're practicing the actual act of submissiveness. You're conforming to their willingness of love. By rubbing his feet, by cooking his food, by uh, buying him, <laughs> buying him gifts, whatever like his love language is. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I, I, it's not. It's not good. I guess <laughs> for not... you, for me, I just find it respect. <laughs> I just find it's just a respect thing. Like, okay, I respect the fact that you like to be loved this way. Okay.
Hey, dudes ain't getting married no more. Like I said, all of my yeah, friends, same about. age as me, none of them getting married. You know? While we're talking about friends, I'm too, let saying. me get y'all's perspective, guys right, and women. Let's get it. This is, sorry, I'm adding another one to this, but it could be quick. But what is y'all's perspective on being married and having all single friends? Like your, your partner having all single friends. I'll take this your, one. I'll take this one for two, Alex. So <laughs> there is nothing wrong with having all single friends as long as you understand that you are not a single friend. So a lot of times what happens is you have all these single friends and they looking down and they like, oh, you married, you married. They make it sound like it's not fun and it's so fun to be single. First of all, the single world is raggedy and even people that are, get, even people that are divorced are always looking for somebody else to marry. And so even after they look for somebody else to marry, the single friends, once you get divorced trying to be single, they get married. Hmm. So all I can say is I can't hope who my friends are. You know, these are friends. These are people that I've dealt with since I was an undergrad. So like for me to change my friends because they're not married and I am, then that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? I, so all I'm saying is like they don't, they don't, I don't, they don't force me to do anything. You know what I mean? They know that I'm married. They respect that. You know, if they didn't, I probably wouldn't hang out with them. You know, it's just Amber just doesn't like the fact that I have all single friends. No, I don't like the fact that, like Shook said, you got all single friends, but you under if you understand that you're married and there's a certain level of communication to that when you out with your f single friends and like Elijah saying, y'all switching up, doing different things, and it's mm. gonna be a little later or something. But if you act like you don't understand and you try to be single with your single friends or at least have that mentality that's where it's a problem for me mm -hmm. so i don't care about you having single friends i'd like you to throw abe and elijah in there and have some married friends y'all need to talk to a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> that's called a kitchen pass but i just yeah, wanted yeah, to know yeah. y'all's perspective on that because mm -hmm. I, re I really get butt hurt mm -hmm. about it because i'm like bro you going out every uh, every other weekend yeah um and every, then every like now and again. you know staying now. out late like you ain't married like i just and I, as a wife but i like think i'm me, really i think i'm really lenient too because yeah. you got someone yeah. that will let you be. yeah but like for me like she's like i don't have a leash on my neck man i'm not a dog ain't no leash. you know You're what i'm married. saying you, you don't get to tell me what i can and can't do like i, I agree you know so look all right we can come to some type of agreement right and which we do right Cause I don't do it all the time. We don't do it all the time. Follow but through. ultimately, I'm so sorry. Agreement. I, follow through. I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can understand exactly what Marcus is saying. I don't like for somebody to try and control me. I feel like I've been raised. I don't need your help. Um, you are a partner. You are not my parent. I don't sleep with my parent. I don't want to sleep with my parent. So, as far as being controlled, I I think I like to be allowed to be the adult that I know that I can be and the adult that you married and that you trust. But that's if I'm being that, you know, I mean, that person and I'm upholding those standards. Uh, let me say this. Let me clarify that this is perceived control. Perceived control meaning that he thinks anything that I say, he thinks I'm trying to control him. <laughs> I have no desire oh to God. control what he does. None whatsoever. I just have expectations for my partner, and I'm sure Ash is going to touch on this, but the respect that you have, the level of respect that you have for your relationship. I ain't trying to control you. You always just go straight to that word. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Ash. So, um, I think I was going to go back to what Marcus was saying about, you know, and, and what Suge was saying about not wanting to be controlled, not wanting to have, feel like you got a leash around your neck. All good and well, but it's a level of respect that you show to somebody you care about. So it's not that I have to check in. It's that because I respect my partner, I'm going to let them know I'm okay or where I'm at or, or plans change. That's out of respect. He doesn't look for me to do that. It's just naturally something that I do. And he's, he's kind of the same way. When, he's, when he goes like home to Atlanta, I know he's probably going to hang out with his friends if possible. And he's going to let me know, even though I'm not even there. I'm not even there. I, he in Atlanta, I'm wherever we live at the time, could care less what he's doing, but he's still just going to let me know. It's a level of respect. And some people try to look at that like, oh, for the woman to do it is because she she's submissive and she got to tell her husband what she's doing. 
It has nothing to do with submission. No, it's a level of respect. That. You usually do that. All I tell you, you're okay. Right, and he don't even. He don't even. It doesn't even resonate for him that I'm doing it. Like if I tell him I'm going here or I'm doing this, he like okay, like it okay, like cool. It don't. It's not a matter of I need to ask permission from my partner. Uh, Shug is a little bit more laid back when it come to that. Like, I mean, I don't go out now. Do what you want. I'm a little older now. I ain't, but back in the day, I was going out a little bit more. <laughs> You know, Mike, 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 Mike pop off in the club. You never know. Uh, not anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't do that no more. So, uh, but uh, there's no kitchen pass. Abe can do whatever he want to do because mm-hmm. I don't care and I trust him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you trust him. But when trust has been broken, it has to be built back up mm-hmm. to get back to that point. Somebody got to put in the work to do that. Mm-hmm. And it ain't going to be the person that didn't break the trust that has to put the work in. That's true. I cannot confirm or deny if I've ever broken the trust before. So. <laughs> okay, so Michael, how do you feel about uh, your uh, partner having single friends? Um, dang. Uh, I don't really have a problem with it. Um, I think like you said, I, I respect is a real thing. Um, as long as you're not disrespecting me and you're not feeling disrespected, uh, I don't think it's an issue because at the end of the day, you're going to, I can be the best of me. And if that's not enough for you, let me go and you live your best life. It is what it is. Because I don't, I, would have I don't to say stifle I agree. individuality. I am the same. Go ahead. I don't stifle individuality. If that's what you want to do, I want you to progress because I don't want you ever to tell me, oh, I lost myself in this relationship. No, you won't tell me that. You will have individuality to do what you want to do. I'll express myself. I'll express myself constantly. I don't like this. Will you, will you have a better way of doing this? If that happens, it does. If I don't like it, I'll communicate. Now, eventually, I get tired. I'm just keep moving because you don't obviously respect the way I feel. I would agree. I, I am. I am the single friend of all my friends that are married. So, and a lot of them have been friends with me, even males that have been friends with me for almost 15, 20 years. And so if their partner told them that they could be friends with me, I would be devastated. (laughs) Like, oh my God, like these are people that I really care about and vice versa for me. If you have single friends, I don't have an issue with you going out, being with your friends because I feel like you still need your single friends, like in some capacity, maybe not do the single friend activities that they do. But I do think that there is some space for single friends. Um, And I, I, again, respecting your partner's wishes and making your partner feel comfortable, explaining to your partner. I think communication is always key. If you can talk to your partner about who's been in your life previously, where this person is, what they're doing, just being open. I think your partner would be more secure in their relationship and understand, oh, yes, they are just friends. And it's okay if that person goes with that friend. Uh, But if there's some shady stuff going on, or, you know, just some things that are going on that you're like, eh, question, question, and your partner don't explain that, then I fully agree. If you bring it up saying, hey, I don't like this, and that person still doesn't respect that, then it's time for us to move on. So I definitely agree. I think that if your partner is trying to keep up with your, with his single, his or her single friends while in a marriage, I think that there's, there needs to be a conversation. Um, because what is it about that single life you're trying to keep up with? Is there something that's missing? Especially if the other partner is feeling a certain way about it and it has expressed that. Um, there's one thing to hang with your single friends. There's another thing to keep up with them. The marriage aspect I can't speak on because I'm not married. I've never been married, so I have no, I have no advice or any uh, conversation or any intention about that. Not intention. I do want to get married one day. But... Uh, be in a being in a relationship. I mean, like I said, I'm a, I'm believe in individuality. I don't. I'm not a stifler. Like be you. Now, if you're talking like this, would it, this one it will get different. It will shift. And when you're talking about, hey, I want to get married. I want to have kids. Like I want this. And you start saying stuff like that. Oh, it, the action better follow. Because if you saying I want to be married, but you still out here going to a club every weekend, and you're not, you you still can't like text. Hey, I'm home. 
whoa, that's that's not that's not you being a wife, or you can't text, oh, oh, baby, this is what I'm doing, or you're communicating, hey, this is where I am, I'm I'm good. You're not like certain things you're not willing to do that wives do, or you you want to build to be a wife, then no, you don't don't talk about that stuff because I'm like. Your your joke, your what you're saying isn't true. Like you're not ready to be a wife. You still want to be a girlfriend. Talk a big boy talk, but where your, where your big where your big girl panties at? Are you willing to do the work to be a wife? And that's when like the the relationship is start to shift. Like oh, are you ready to move in? Are you ready to have this conversation? Are you ready like? Are you ready to go to couples therapy? Are you ready to seek help? Deal with your trauma. Then that's when we start rolling. Then you can say yeah, I want to be a wife. Then okay, until then, nah, I don't want to hear that word. Things are different, especially with social media, and I am a very observant person, so I will sit back and observe something for a while before I go forward with it, and I, this may be unpopular, (laughs) but these days I just don't feel like marriage is even worth it. Now, I'm not saying that I do not celebrate marriage for everybody else. I believe in black love. I believe in, you know, love and happiness for everybody who wants it, but for me, for me, Marriage is a lot of work. And I and I heard a TikTok where a lady said that people are not ready for other people to change in their relationship. So I could be one way for two years and then something happens and then I'm a completely different person. And you have to be able to adjust in marriages when that happens, like anything happens. And plus, I've worked with older individuals like <clears throat> in my job and the way things are set up as you get older, like people don't understand, like disability can happen. Anything can happen. And now you're taking care of your partner. Uh, You could lose a child and, or even lose your partner. I literally just a week ago, one of my girlfriends lost her husband, literally. Mm -hmm. And they are my age. And now she has to go through life without her child, without her husband taking care of their child. So marriage, I believe is just this it's something that I'm I'm just not ready for. Not that I'm not mature enough. It's just a lot goes into marriage. And I, I just, I don't see the benefit right now. I just, I just, I just don't see it. Um, because I, I don't know if I'm, I don't know that if somebody changes who they are that I'm ready for that. And there, that, that's a hard reality when your partner wakes up and is somebody else. And you have to adjust to that. And I... The way things, the way people can just move on or start cheating, like literally all these girls on TikTok be exposing people who are married, men be in their inboxes, men have hollered at me and they're married. Um, and I, I just, I don't feel like being tied to somebody, not saying that you can't divorce or get a divorce, but if I'm getting married, I'm only getting married once and that's it. And I'm going to late, I'm going to wait late in the game to do so. So maybe around 40. I'll be ready to stop being a hot girl, but I, I just can't do it. <laughs> like the authority of being a man, like you really have to, you have to love a queen and you have to support a queen at the same time and not hinder a queen. So marriage is a lot of work. That's just a little bit that goes into it. I don't, I, I, don't, think I, don't, I don't think I've heard that about hindrance. Like I never, I never hear that often. Like how much, like if you're not leading, you could be hindering. And oh, I never yeah. heard of it. I never heard it put that way. Oh yeah. Um, if, yeah. I, ne- I, I just never heard it put that way, but I, I do agree that marriage is a lot of work and hindering. And I, now that I'm thinking about it, like how often do people not understand how much they hinder their partner versus helping? Mm-hmm. It, that's like, that's like saying like, that's you gotta good, have, that's a good like, way to, cause you career driven, right? If your husband like, nah, baby, I want you to stay at home. He's hindering you. He's not letting you be the best you. He has to be that, that man on your shoulders, that's my that's my baby. Clap it up, clap. support. And one day it'll shift, and you'll have to be that other person. But it only right. comes in the it's seasons. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. I agree. And I'm my, you know, I I can appreciate a man who is not threatened by a woman who is career driven, mm-hmm. and is very supportive of that. Um, and I personally like that. I think that that is, I think that's dope when a man can support a woman in her interests and what she wants to do and see her outside of being just a mother or a wife. Cause those are the two identities that are often attached to women and not 
often boss, leader, CEO, or whatever, entrepreneur. Like, that's not often attached to women. And when they do hear women are in those roles, they tend to be like, oh, who she thinks she is, kind of like, you know. But it is, it does feel good, at least for me as a mm. woman who is very, very invo- engaged in her career, when a man wants to support that. Those are the best women. Those are the ones that everybody like, damn, she 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 on top of the world the whole time. It's going to go way left. She being submissive to you <laughs> in, in the bedroom. She Y'all just getting it in. And it's just all wild crazy. But she's submitting to you while she's out there running, running the world. That is the, probably the most hottest thing in the world, bro. She top dog outside in the bedroom. Mm-mm, it's a whole different story. We never yeah. talked about that before mm-hmm. we got married or before mm-hmm. we even got in a relationship. We never talked about priorities. Yeah. And after a while, we started to realize, like, something is, is off. Like, mm-hmm. why can't we get along at some points? Go ahead, Ash. Did y'all have premarital counseling, Amber? Nope. Nope. Absolutely. Ah, Didn't even okay. know about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Had no idea that was Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. We did. Yeah. Well, we Yes. I did? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. So what did y'all learn in that, like, yeah. prior to getting married? Well, okay. and premarital just for our viewers, real quick, let me say just for our viewers, premarital counseling does not have to be religious-based. I think a lot of people have a false mm-hmm. sense that you have to go to a pastor for it. You mm-hmm. don't. You can go to a regular counselor or therapist for it. Ours was uh, religious-based. Um, I did like it. I can't remember how many sessions we went to. Probably at least six. Yeah. Um... And, and he did cover certain things in the Bible, like even divorce. That was like one of the things that came up because it is in the, the scripture on why that was created. So um, we one of the, I think the most, uh, Pastor Moore was his, uh, our pastor at the time. One of the most beneficial things he did is like one of, the, one of the sessions he was like, you need to come like with your baggage, whatever your baggage is. Like if you got another kid out there. You probably want to <laughs> tell Rashonda now. Oh, now. The time. <laughs> um, it was like some other stuff, like we talked about, like debt. Like if you got debt that Rashonda don't know about, or vice versa, that I had, and I was maybe I just didn't tell her about it. He was like, right now, you know, and I don't think we had to do it in front of him. But no, he, we did it in front of him. Was and, it? Yeah. And then another thing that was funny too was uh, I had had surgery on my eyebrow, and so my eye was real swollen. And he was like, well, brother, if you're going to be doing that, we need to have a different kind of counseling session. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, he thought he oh was my God. Me. He wanted to know about that, too. He was like, what should, where your demons come? Where, what, what demons are you bringing in here? Like, what do you have going on that each of y'all need to work through? Because if it's out here now while y'all are dating, it's going to blow up while y'all are married. Mm-hmm. And so, and then he talked about finances. Like, yeah. if you can't trust somebody, because I didn't, I didn't trust anybody with my finances. Well, how are you gonna trust somebody to have kids with them if you can't trust them with money? Mm-hmm. So, you know, he talked about the basis of why you should be getting married mm-hmm. in the first place. So we've been married almost thirteen years. So I gotta like jog my memory to think about this. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that that, that I do remember, um, we did religious based counseling to the pastor who married us. Did our premarital counseling? I think we did like six or eight sessions. Um, pastor Haig in Niagara Falls, New York. And the one thing that sticks out for me was he said, "The very things that irritate you now will be the very things that irritate you in twenty years because mm. they probably won't change. So if you cannot handle them now, don't think that you're gonna be able to handle them or it's gonna change." And that sticks for me because I'm like, it is literally the same things we have issues with that we had 13 years ago. And the takeaway is basically before you get married, go to premarital counseling or at least somebody who can can help you kind of lay some of those things out. Yes, you realize that every couple is going to be unique. Like even Abe bringing up the whole finances, that should be a topic in premarital counseling for sure. And a lot of people do wonder, well, if you marry, join accounts everybody's relationship looks different Mm -hmm. so not so every couple some couples literally keep separate accounts their whole marriage and it's perfectly Mm -hmm. fine Mm -hmm. you don't it's not a cookie cutter thing when it comes to that
So that's funny. I was telling uh, <laughs> Amber earlier. She, I know she's not recording, but um, I'm seeking therapy now. I have a therapist and a life coach for probably like two, three months now. Yeah. Let's let's get deep. Um, so growing up, my dad paid all the bills. My mother did not have to work. She changed her job like the seasons change. She if my if she wanted to start a business, my dad say, hey, here's the money. Start your business. This and a third. My dad worked his ass off. He was never home. So, because he's never home, he provided, but he didn't, he provided financially, but he didn't provide emotionally. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying he went out here living his best life, doing no work, and no, he wasn't doing, but my mother was living her best life. And one day we were, we were in college. I'll never get the phone call. My dad uh, told, well, I think my dad came home one day from work, caught her in the bed with another man crazy um so i think my dad called me was like well you will you uh you guys don't ha you're not gonna have a house to come back to i'm like why because like you know he said i can't do this i refuse to pay bills for someone that doesn't respect me so for me I, i'm like that trauma for me stifles me because even if i uh, when i was in a relationship and i think I, I we didn't have issues about like love or loyalty or stuff like that issue was that she wanted to love on me and i didn't allow her to love on me because i was afraid because she was pushing like hey I want this. I want this. I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't want none of that. Cause I'm like, like one of the things we were having a conversation about was like bill. Like well, if we move in together, who would pay the bills? I'm like, oh, you want me to pay the bills? Oh, you want me to pay the bills? So you can, I can, I don't have, I got to work hard so you can cheat on me. Or it'd be like, oh, you want me to do this? Oh, so you can cheat on me. You want to get married? Oh, so we can have this and that. Oh, you can cheat on me. That was always my end goal. And for me, I had to kind of like sit back and like, you know, bro, you can't, Everyone isn't your mom. I love my mom. Does she's such a sweet lady? So so don't like my mom. Like she's a human being. We all love her. Um, so and even that kind of stifled me, like career wise. I'm like sometimes I'm like, well, if I want to be the best at what I do, then I'm not gonna be home sometimes. And I didn't think you could have balance, but you there is balance. And for me, it's hard to kind of understand balance of, uh, like being the best here and still being able to come home and love. But you can do both. So. I'm understanding that now. Back then, I didn't understand it. So I would just, like, she like, baby, come kiss on me. Come hug. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Chill. I don't like that. I don't like that love language. Or I don't like this. I don't like that. But now, when I started to want that stuff, she's like, nah. She stopped pushing back. So I had to kind of like, bro, you got you got some issues you got to deal with. So for me, it's a little, you know, it's a little different. It runs deep. And that's like trauma when we were older. Like, that's like, I was in college. So that's like tw uh, 20s, my 20s. So I just didn't start folks out later, later years so 30 so you know you need help if you don't heal yourself you can't be in a relationship because you'll bring toxicity i would have to say i 100 percent agree um i was also in a relationship where i was going to get married back in 2015 and he was in the military and there were some things going on behind my back that i didn't know and Fast forward, I found out he was with someone else like the entire time. Um, and then uh, that relationship ended and I did not get married. Mm. Um, and then a year later, I met somebody else. And the way I would not integrate with this man, like he was trying to get me to move in. He was trying to get me to do all these things. And I already had never lived with a male anyway. So I was like, just hands off. Absolutely not. Um, now, he was more of the traditional male where he wanted me to stay home. You know, he wanted another child. I was very career oriented and I just I, we wasn't going to work anyway because we had two different perspectives on roles and things of that nature. But uh, at the end of our relationship, he did end up telling me he was like, you know, he should every single time I tried to integrate us, you blocked it off. You refused. Now, there were some things as the reasons why I didn't. But I started to think about how much my previous relationship had played a part of me not integrating with him. Like, I have refused. So I did also go to get a life coach. Um, she's still one of my good friends today. Uh, but I got a life coach for a year, and I had to do some work, like some serious work on myself. Um, and I do think that it is important to seek help, especially when you're carrying leftover things from your past relationships that it that whether we want to acknowledge it or not will impact your future relationships unless we address them. Thank you for watching and, and just um, just message if you want us back. Oh, yeah. oh God, yeah. no. <laughs>
Soundstripe. <laughs>